Hi guys, my name is Tom and in this video I'm going to show you how you can start a podcast. I'm going to talk about the equipment you're going to need, uh, also how to publish a podcast so it shows up worldwide uh, in all the places where people find podcasts. Uh, and then probably most importantly, how you can do all of that for free. First, let's talk about the equipment. Uh, so if you own a phone, any regular smartphone these days, then you really have all the equipment that you need to start a podcast because with your phone and the built-in mic, you can record your audio. Now, if you want to also do video, which I'll talk about a little bit more later, you can also do that because you have uh, cameras on your phone. Now, if you're somebody who prefers to use a laptop, then obviously you can do the same thing uh, and you would just use your laptop's built-in uh, microphone and your webcam for video. Now, if you're on a laptop and you want to be able to record your audio and maybe even your video, uh, then the easiest way to do that is to download OBS Studio. It's a free program. I'll provide the links for that and uh, you can do everything that you need uh, right in there. Once you're done installing OBS Studio, uh, it's going to look something like that. And here I got this infinite mirror because I'm recording the desktop right now uh, in OBS Studio. So uh, if you want to add uh, basically a webcam, you're just going to go here to sources, click add and then choose video capture device you can name it whatever you want and then just make sure you select your webcam uh, and then you know you can actually adjust settings here for the video like brightness and all that stuff i'm going to leave that all in default and then uh, you just want to make sure that you basically make this bigger so that it covers your whole screen now if you want to hear yourself and obviously you're going to make sure that your microphone here is enabled it's working uh, and then here also on the settings uh, you'll be able to adjust, for example, like the um, uh, when you go to the overall here, to the, the recording, where you want this to recording to go, what format, all that stuff. You can adjust your audio settings and video settings like resolution, frame rate, uh, and all that good stuff. And trust me, guys, if when you're starting out, don't uh, go out there and spend all this money on the expensive microphones or recorders or all the stuff, you know, cameras. Uh, because really the most important thing really is to just get your ideas out there. And like I said, you can do it even with your cell phone. So I would say at the beginning, instead of spending your money uh, on the uh, expensive gear, first just actually start uh, spending the time on coming up with good ideas, then actually recording your podcast, uh, and then you know putting it out there. And see, first of all, if you like the whole process, because I don't know if you know, but uh, statistically speaking, most podcasts uh, quit after just seven episodes. So if you can get past those seven episodes and continue to produce the you know new episodes and you really see that you're enjoying the whole process, uh, then you probably want to, with time, slowly upgrade your whole setup, whether it's your microphones, recorders, all that stuff. Now, if you're ready to upgrade to better equipment, then uh, probably the first thing you'll want to get is a good microphone. The one I'm using is the Rode Procaster. It's actually a microphone designed specifically uh, for podcasting. If you want to get something also, you know, very good for podcasting, but maybe slightly more affordable, then uh, here I have the Rode uh, PodMic, also a really great microphone. And by the way, we actually use both of these microphones on one of my podcasts. Uh, of course, if you want to use one of these professional microphones, you're also going to need a professional audio recorder because uh, these microphones don't just plug into your laptop or your, your cell phone. Uh, they use industry standard XLR connections. Uh, so you're going to need something you know, more professional to record in. So what I'm using is actually the Rodecaster Pro 2. I kind of show you guys here quickly. Uh, and I'm actually going to be doing a, a more in-depth kind of a review about this. So you can kind of find out a lot of the cool features that it has. But this is actually like an all-in-one audio solution. So you it can double as your audio card in your computer. Um, I mean, you can record like I'm recording right now, The you know, this episode here. Uh, I can, for example, even have some sound effects, like, like crickets. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> things like that, like it's got a lot of cool things. You can record f uh, four different microphones at once. You can have people call in. I guess a lot of great features, but it's also very expensive. <laughs> so uh, it's, uh, I think right now, retails for around $600. The microphone around $200. So you can see how quickly all of this stuff can add up. And that's why I'm saying at the beginning, just start with your cell phone. Uh, then maybe if you want to upgrade the audio on your cell phone, uh, you could just get one of the, you know, the, the earpieces, the, the, you know, the earbuds, you know, Bluetooth, uh, or for example, any other even wired microphone that you plug to your cell phone so you can have the mic closer to your mouth. Uh, another thing you could actually do is another great microphone from Rode. It's the Rode Wireless Go 2, 
uh, an amazing microphone system, very small, and you can use that with a laptop or, for example, with your cell phone. And I did a video before uh, showing how to use that microphone, for example, in a setup where you're doing Zoom calls and things like that for your work, maybe, or some presentations. So, uh, again, I'll provide the link for that video. You can check out more info about uh, that setup. Uh, now, another more affordable uh, audio recorder is the Zoom uh, Pad Track 4, uh, which actually my friend Daniel, with whom I'm doing the, the podcast, uh, he actually uses, uh, and we actually, the way we record our podcast is we're, we're basically remotely uh, done. So uh, he's in one country, I'm in another, we just call each other uh, over video, video call, uh, and then uh, I record myself here with my microphone, my audio recorder. He uses uh, the pod mic, so he uses that microphone, he uses the Zoom uh, pod track 4 audio recorder, and then uh, for video, because we actually also record video, um, he uses his webcam uh, and he records all of that to OBS Studio. While I'm using a Sony A7S III, great camera because it uh, records, you know, great quality 4K video, amazing out of focus, all that stuff. Um, uh, but again, you can use anything. Like I said, you can even use your webcam. Uh, and actually, Daniel upgraded, I know, for, to a better webcam. I think it's a Logitech. Again, I'll provide the link for that. But it's basically like an external webcam that you can plug in uh, to a new computer. And that just gives you slightly better quality. And then I just upload all of my audio and video files to him. And then he edits uh, all of the, the elements together uh, to create one seamless podcast. Uh, the way that I suggest you do it, and that's the way that Daniel does it, uh, is by using a free software called DaVinci Resolve. You can They have a paid and a free version. Just download the free version. And uh, it's a great video editor, but you can also just edit the audio if you wanted to. And in it, you can just lay all the different audio tracks that you have of each of your guests, uh, the different video tracks. You can switch between the video. Uh, and you can do all of that very easily. Again, if you want an in-depth tutorial on how to use DaVinci Resolve, I have some on my YouTube channel. Uh, but you can also find more uh, tutorials, obviously, online. Uh, and then from DaVinci Resolve, you're going to export that audio or audio and video file so you can upload it uh, to your podcast uh, host. Now, if you are going to be recording a podcast, then please, please uh, use good quality lighting. And what I mean by that is, again, you don't have to buy any special gear, but you can just, you know, go somewhere where you have a lot of light. So either record during the day, maybe record next to a, a big window, and that window will just give you a lot of natural sort of light, even if it's not directly. You're actually, in fact, most of the time you don't want to have directly the sunlight in your face. But uh, just kind of that ambient light coming in through a big window, it's going to provide you a nice soft light. And it's going to make your video look better. Um, another option is obviously you can use just your lights in your room. Uh, but if you're going to do that, make sure that all the light bulbs in your room are the same color temperature. Meaning don't get some light bulbs that are very cool light, another one that's very yellowish warm and all that stuff, because when you're mixing all of that, and then especially if you're recording on a webcam or your cell phone, the automatic, basically, white balance in your camera is just going to, the world is not going to know what to do with it, and your video most likely is going to look really, really bad. So uh, make sure it's all one uniform color. And then, of course, again, if with time, if you really want to upgrade, uh, you can get a lot of the professional lights, like the ones I'm using here in my studio, uh, and there's a ton of options of that. And again, I've done a ton of videos on different lighting uh, setups, different light options, how much they cost and all the details about all those lights. Again, you can check out by heading to my website at tomantusfilms.com uh, or just follow the links again in the description. Now, do you have to record a video for a podcast? Uh, answer, of course, is no, because it's a podcast. Most people still listen only to podcasts. Let's see when they're commuting to work. Uh, but video is becoming more and more popular in podcasts, and especially if you're going to upload your podcast, let's say, to a platform like YouTube. Um, but now also, for example, a big pl podcast platform like Spotify supports video. So I think it just adds another little layer to your podcast. And again, when people don't want to, they can just listen to your audio. But if they want to be able to see your face or see the things, for example, you might be showing during your podcast, uh, then video is a great option. And, uh, and like I said, Spotify now supports it. And that actually takes me to my next point, which is how to host a podcast so that people worldwide can easily access it and listen to it or, again, see it. There's actually a lot of uh, online uh, podcast hosting platforms. Now, most of them are just going to charge you a monthly fee. They offer lots of different plans, you know, different advantages here and there. Uh, but again, if you're starting out, you're not sure if this is something you're really going to be doing long term, you're still not making money with your podcast, then 
again, I'm going to suggest a free and uh, I think a really good way because this is how I do my podcast uh, and that's to upload it to a website called anchor.fm and they're actually now owned by Spotify uh, and they allow again for you to upload just a, a video file with the audio and uh, they'll host the audio file for you uh, but also the video and uh, and then through their website you can actually very quickly syndicate your website worldwide to all the other uh, podcast platforms. Now, the way that you kind of put out your podcast uh, so it shows up on all the different platforms is through what's called an RSS feed. Uh, now, something to keep in mind here for the future is that if you use the free service from Anchor.fm, uh, then, like I said, it's all great. But let's say, you know, a few years down the line or whatever, maybe a few months, you become uh, one of the most popular podcasts out there and you want to be able to maybe negotiate a deal like Joe Rogan did or... Uh, you want to, I don't know, maybe the, the podcast host uh, that you're with right now is maybe censoring your episodes or whatever it is. For whatever reason, if you want to move off that platform and go to another platform, well, you kind of can't because you're stuck now with them because your RSS feed is basically coming from them. So if you leave, that RSS feed disappears and then all those followers that you've built and took all this time to do... Uh, suddenly can't reach you or can't find your podcast. And that's kind of what happened to a lot of creators uh, like myself on you know a platform like YouTube where for years we would build subscriber lists, but we never really had direct access to our subscribers. And then with time, YouTube made it more and more difficult to actually reach our subscribers. And now, for example, I mean, less than like 5% of my subscribers actually get any kind of notifications about my videos. Um, so again, if you want to have direct sort of access and want to make sure that, uh, that you're controlling uh, at the end of the day your RSS feed, uh, then what you should do is uh, use, again, what I'm using, which is a feed burner. Uh, it's a free service. Again, you go on there and basically what it does is it essentially takes your RSS feed and it kind of swaps it for a custom one. So let's say if you, you know, further down the line, again, you become more popular and you want to take your podcast to another platform. You can do that, and then all you do is in the feed burner, you just swap the, the original RSS feed that you get, um, and you basically, you know, your, your podcast will still be linked because the main RSS feed that you're kind of putting out on all the podcast pl platforms is still the same. It's still the one that you're getting from your feed burner. Uh, it's just the underlying one that's going to change. But your viewers, your, your audience will, won't know any of that stuff. And all the episodes and everything will still sync up and they'll be able to, to see you. So it's just kind of, I would say, future-proofing, making sure that you're able in the future to, again, do different things or move your podcast to different platforms. Now, if you have no clue what any of this stuff means, what RSS basically stands for is a really simple syndication. Uh, and it's, like I said, it's a very simple code, basically, or text, really. Um, that you're putting out there uh, that allows uh, different websites, platforms, all that stuff uh, to find the different, let's say, a new blog post that you might have or a new podcast or things like that and where to find it on which server. So that's really what it's there for. And like I said, if you take the one that, for example, Anchor.fm provides, yeah, you can take that RSS feed and you can uh, start putting it into all the online platforms. Uh, but like I said, then you're kind of stuck with them. So that's why I suggest that you go to FeedBurner and swap your RSS feed there. And then with the, your final uh, RSS feed, once you have that, uh, you're basically going to go to, for example, uh, you know, Apple or Google Podcasts or uh, CastBox and all these places. And by the way, uh, Anchor.fm is really good at that. Like we'll kind of show you, pretty much tell you how you can make sure that your podcast shows up on all these platforms. Uh, they'll have a list of there, there, like of the most popular ones. And they'll even provide links of uh, where you go to actually uh, place your RSS feed. Uh, and so you can register your podcast with it. And then from there, it's sort of straightforward. You you know click, for example, one of the links there for like Apple Podcasts. Uh, and then you log in, you follow their procedures. Every, like even Amazon Music, all of them have slightly different procedure. Uh, but you're usually going to have to provide your name, your email, so they can reach you. And then your RSS feed. Uh, and then it takes, with different platforms, again, it's different. Sometimes it takes an, an one day, sometimes it takes two or three days. But eventually, once your podcast RSS feed is um, uh, basically accepted, it's going to start showing up on all those platforms where, again, people go to look for, for different uh, podcasts. Uh, now, uh, to do that, I would, again, suggest that you wait maybe till you have, like, a minimum two or three episodes so that 
uh, again, you make sure you're making sure that you're getting accepted to all these different platforms. So hopefully uh, all of that makes it very clear to understand. If not, then uh, as always, you can reach me through my website. I have a contact page there or um, you know, leave me a question in the comment section below. Um, and basically, once you have all that set up, you're just going to upload more and more episodes. So just got to stick to it. Got to do those uh, new episodes. Uh, you can actually also, again, if you don't want to even want to deal with any of this technical stuff or, or editing your podcast, uh, then you can even directly record your podcast on Anchor.fm. Again, I'm not sponsored, but they're just free, you know, service that they provide. And it's actually pretty good. So that's the reason why I'm using uh, them. So you can do that very straightforward. Just click there uh, to um, basically record the podcast. Uh, and then you can just use your telephone or your, your, uh, your laptops, for example, microphone. And then, like I said, after that, really, it just comes down to making sure that you stick to it. You come up with good ideas, I guess, with the podcast and you slowly build an audience. And I think podcasts, I, I would encourage more people to get into podcasting because they are, they can be very fun if you're not concentrating on it, like being, oh, I'm doing this to make money or whatever, or to get famous. Because on average, podcasts are not going to have as big of a sort of, or as many views as you might be able to get with like a viral video that's going to, maybe uh, you can upload to YouTube. But uh, but they're a great way to communicate with people, to have conversations. Maybe you can have guests on your podcast uh, and you can do them short form or long form, uh, you know, and there's really no limits to podcasting. I think they're really fun. And and again, an, uh, another great way of participating in the sort of online community that we have uh, and, and be able to share ideas with other people. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comment section below. Again, if you have more questions, do the same thing. My name is Tom, and as always, you guys can also find me on my website at tomantosfilms.com. Thank you, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.